Hello and welcome to a new part of this tutorial series. Today we're just going to be implementing a simple drag and drop system. So I have items in my inventory, I can grab them. And then if I drop them, they're going to be put back into place. And if I drag them into the hotbar, they're just going to be set in the hotbar right here. As, I as you can see, I can still use them. So if I hover over it and click it, it's going to be used. And I can reboot them back in the inventory right here. And then put them, drag them around just as I want them to. Awesome. So let's stop talking and start coding. We got a lot to do today. Let's start by going to our scripts folder and creating a new script. And let's call this the item drag script and open it up in Visual Studio. We will not need the update function, so let's just delete it for now. And up here where we derive from mono behavior, we also want to be actually implementing the iDrag handler. That is a Unity interface. And to be able to implement the iDrag handler interface, we want to go on the iDrag handler and then hit Alt and Enter. And they were going to see some suggestions and we just want to hit enter because we want to be using the unity engine dot event system. We still have to actually implement the methods. So let's hover over it again, alt and enter and implement interface. That's what we want to do. And now we are error free. But to be able to use the on drag function, we also want to include some kind of function to start the drag. So let's make something like I begin and drag handler again and hover over it, hit alt enter and then implement the on being dragged function, on being drag I mean and now let's delete the throw errors right here and the one that right here as well and the on begin drag function is going to be called once once we start dragging the item and the on drag function is going to be called every single time when we want to update the function so let's now figure out what we want to do with the script let's go to the prefabs folder and click on the inventory slot prefab that we have and let's now just down here add a component and let's add the item drag script on here this is going to sit on the transform of our inventory slot prefab let's go back to the item drag handler script and let's copy the start function to the top in the item drag script we want to have a reference to the item slot script so that we can use some properties it has so let's just now make a private item and slot and let's call this the item slot and in the start function just assign the item slot is going to be equal to the get component. You can use the get component because it is on the same game object like this. And now we have a reference to our item slot. Once we start dragging it, we want to call the item slot dot on cursor exit, not enter exit. So that we want to display the item info once we start dragging it. So that's the begin drag function. That's quite all right. And then on the drag function, we just want to alter the transform dot position to the input dot mouse position like this now if i save it go to unity and hit the start button open up the inventory hit a couple of times x to spawn some items and now i can just click on an item and drag it around that's quite all right but now we have a couple of errors so if i let go we are going to use the stake which we do not want to do and if i just grab the wood and let it go it's just not going to reset and just stay on this position which is not good at all and we also cannot drag it out of this parent so the first thing you want to do is change the parent right after we start dragging it and also disable the use function while we're dragging it so let's open up the inventory slot script right here and let's add a property let's make it a public bool is being dragged and let's set it to false at the start just like this and the use item function is called once we release a mouse button so we do not want to use it if it, the item is null or if the is being dragged is equal to true that is one instance where we want to use it and also down here in the on cursor entry we also want to put in an or and is being dragged is equal to true then we also want to return and do not display any item info so this should prevent us from being able to use the item but now we still need to set it up so in the item drag script right here where we get the item slot reference when we start dragging it we want to just go to the item slot and then the is being dragged and set that to true and then when we stop dragging it which is another interface so i and drag handler like this and again I'll hover over it alt enter and then implement the interface and it's going to put in a new function down here and in the new function we just want to go to the item slot and is being dragged and reset this back to the false because we stopped dragging the object around and the other thing we need to do we need to change the transform so in the start function right here let's make a new private transform variable and let's call this the base parent and let's assign the base parent to the transform.parent right at the start. So transform.parent. Now we have a reference to the start state and we want to change it. 
in the on being dragged function but we do not know to what we want to change it yet so let's go back to unity and we do want to change it to this main canvas right here if i open it up i have the inventory hotbar and so on everything under the canvas right here this is the main canvas if you go to the scene view this is basically all the ui elements that we see and let's now go to the game manager open it up and all we want to do here is an add a new property a public transform and let's call this the main canvas and we also want to remove the two public floats right here we don't need them anymore let's go back to unity and for the game manager let's just drag and drop the canvas in here into the new field that we have created awesome now we can go back to the item drag script in visual studio and where we start the dragging we want to set a new transform so transform dot set parent and we want to set a new parent and this is just going to be the game manager dot instance and then dot main canvas like this and a semicolon at the end and let's copy this function and once we end the dragging we just want to reset the transform for now so set parent and base parent that we set up earlier and now let's go back to unity and start the game and see what it looks like open up the inventory spawn a couple of items and now if i grab an item i can drag it through the out the old screen and if i release it right here it's going to be put back in place let's now start working on the drag and drop system so that we actually can drop an item into our hotbar that we have already created to do that let's go back to the game manager and let's make another public transform let's call this the hotbar transform let's go back to the item drag script and let's make a new private variable and, call, and call this the rect transform because we want to check if the mouse cursor is in the bounds and let's call this the hotbar rect and in the start function we can just assign it so the hotbar rect is going to be equal to the game manager dot instance and then dot hotbar transform so hotbar transform and we want to cast it to a rect transform like this and now when we stop dragging it right here on the end drag function we want to do this no matter what and reset these things and now we want to check if the rect transform utility dot rect angle contains screen position where is it contains screen point i mean and then we want to check the rect transform as it says in visual studio so this is the hotbar rect and the point is just going to be the input dot mouse position and if this is true that means that we let go our mouse pointer over the hotbar rectangle transform and if this is true then we want to go to the inventory dot instance and then we just want to simply switch hotbar inventory and we want to pass in the item slot dot item we do not have a function for that so let's hop over to the item slot and just up here let's make a public item and let's call this the item with a capital i and just return the current item like this awesome let's now go back to the item drag script and in here we want the item slot dot item that we just created and a semicolon so let's now go back to unity and we still have to assign the value so the hotbar transform is just going to be the hotbar right here like that and now if i start the game open up the inventory spawn a couple of items i can grab this stone release it and it's going to spawn back in here and now if i grab this stone again and put it in the item slot right here it's going to stick to the hotbar and i can use it i can hover over it just as we did before and i can grab this meat put it in here and the same thing happens and i can drag this one and put it in here as well i can put them back with the alt key that we have assigned earlier and we have a couple of bugs right here that we want to probably fix but we still have a little problem so if i expand the item to inventory parent inventory tab and then the scroll view and viewport and right here we have these slots and let's just rename these so rename to slot one and like this and rename to slot three and now if i grab this stake and release it and do this a couple of times so for example the slot two three and one are now switched in position which will give us a, a weird kind of error if we add more items and just drag them out and do a couple of things like this because items are going to start switching around in different places and also if i do this they just switch around even if i just put it on down here in the inventory hotbar to change this we have to put the slots back in the same order as we took them out to do that we can just go to the inventory drag script in visual studio and we simply can save the sibling index so it's private in sibling index and this is just going to save the index of the transform right here so sibling index is going to be equal to the transform dot get sibling index like this awesome now we save the index of the transform that it is at and right here where we assign the transform back so after we change the parent we just want to go to transform dot 
set sibling index and then we want to set the same index as it was earlier at if i go back to unity open up the inventory and spawn a couple of items let's say six and go to the hierarchy and rename them to one through six if i now grab the first stake that i have right here number one will get removed in the hierarchy and set down to the global canvas hierarchy right here and now if i release it it's going to be put back into place as number one awesome that's exactly what we want so if i grab this word right here it's going to be removed and then if i release it it's going to be put back into place where it was and let's now try it out with the stone right here so the stone is at the second item if i grab it it's going to be removed and if i release it it's going to be put back into place where it was awesome that's what you wanted and the inventory is still going to work with the hotbar right here and i can drag the items down here just as i want to and then with the alt key i can move them backwards if i try to add more items so if i try to add more than six items it is going to be reset and it's not going to allow us because we already have the function ready for that awesome so that's what we wanted to do in this tutorial in the next part we're going to make the hotbar work as well with the drag and drop system i hope you enjoyed this part like the video subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next part and i will see you in the next one bye